Imagine standing at the mouth of a cavern, the air sharp with frost, as a Siberian wind howls through the Altai Mountains. It's 40,000 years ago, and the world is a brutal expanse of ice and stone. Woolly mammoths trample the tundra, their trumpets echoing across frozen valleys. Cave lions lurk in the shadows, their roars a warning to any who dare trespass. This is the Ice Age, a time when survival hinged on cunning, strength, and the bonds of kin. In this unforgiving landscape, our ancestors, Homo sapiens, weren't alone. They shared the earth with other humans, cousins who hunted, loved, and dreamed under the same starry skies. Among them were the Neanderthals, stocky and resilient, and another, more elusive group, the Denisovans. Their story, hidden for millennia, begins with a single bone unearthed in a Siberian cave, whispering secrets of a lost world. Today, we'll journey into the heart of prehistory to uncover who the Denisovans were, how they shaped our species, and why their legacy matters. Buckle up, this tale of ancient kinship will grip you until the end, revealing how the echoes of the Ice Age still resonate in our DNA. The Denisovans are a mystery wrapped in enigma. No, not from grand skeletons or vivid cave art, but from scraps of bone and the invisible threads of genetics. Their discovery rewrites the saga of human evolution, proving our ancestors didn't walk a solitary path, but danced a complex waltz with other hominins. Let's dive into their world, piecing together their lives from fragments and exploring what their existence means for us today. To grasp the Denisovan story, we must first paint the prehistoric canvas they inhabited. The Altai Mountains, 300,000 to 50,000 years ago, were a frozen fortress of rugged peaks and windswept valleys. The Mammoth Steppe, a vast biome stretching from Iberia to eastern Russia, defined this era. Grasses swayed under snow, dotted with sparse pines while megafauna roamed. Woolly rhinoceroses with horns like curved blades straight tusked elephants towering over the plains, and megaloceros deer with antlers spanning nearly four meters. Predators ruled the shadows, cave hyenas with bone-crushing jaws, Eurasian cave lions twice the size of modern lions, and herbivorous cave bears that fought fiercely for shelter. Humans, whether Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, or Denisovans, were not apex predators, but scrappy survivors, competing for caves and kills in a world where winter could last years. Life here demanded resilience. Small bands of 10 to 30 roamed the steppe, following herds of reindeer or bison. They wielded flint-tipped spears and hand axes, their edges honed by striking stones together. Fire was their lifeline. Crackling hearths warmed caves, cooked meat to kill parasites, and scared off prowling beasts. Clothing was rudimentary, hides stitched with bone needles, draped like ponchos to fend off the cold. Food came from hunting ibex or scavenging mammoth carcasses, supplemented by roots, berries, or mushrooms when game was scarce. Every day was a gamble, twisted ankles from rocky terrain, infections from cuts or attacks by rival groups, could end a life swiftly. Most didn't live past 30, their bones bearing scars of a violent, fleeting existence. This harsh world shaped not just bodies, but societies. Small groups survived by sharing, meat from a hunt, warmth from a fire, or knowledge of where to find flint. Cooperation was survival, and any group that abandoned its own risked fracturing. The Denisovans, like their Neanderthal cousins, thrived in this crucible, their lives intertwined with the steppe's rhythms and dangers. Their story begins not with grand monuments, but with a single, unassuming relic that changed everything. Fast forward to 2008, but keep your mind rooted in the Ice Age. In Denisova Cave, a remote hollow in Siberia's Altai Mountains, archaeologists sifted through sediment, expecting familiar finds, Neanderthal bones or Homo sapiens tools. Instead, they unearthed a tiny treasure, a single finger bone, barely the size of a pebble. It was clearly hominin, part of our extended family, but its shape didn't scream Neanderthal or sapiens. To solve the puzzle, scientists turned to DNA, sequencing the bone's genetic code in 2021. What they found stunned the world. It wasn't Neanderthal, nor was it us. 
It belonged to a new branch of humanity named Denisovans after the cave that cradled it. Since that discovery, only a handful of fossils have emerged. Three molars identified by DNA joined the finger bone in Denisova Cave dated between 300,000 and 50,000 years ago. A limb fragment revealed a hybrid, a child of a Neanderthal mother and Denisovan father. Proof of ancient interbreeding, a brain case fragment added to the tally, all from the same cave. The only outlier, a partial jawbone from the Tibetan Plateau, 1,500 miles south, found in 2019, hinting at Denisovan's vast range across Asia. These scraps, teeth, a finger, a jaw, are all we have. Without DNA, we might never have known they were distinct. Paleoanthropologists can't yet call them a species. That requires more bones to define unique traits. But these fragments tell a story of a people who walked the earth for millennia, leaving whispers in the genes of those who followed. This scarcity fascinates me. In a world of blockbuster fossil finds, like Lucy the Australopithecus or Neanderthal skulls, the Denisovans are ghosts, defined by what we don't see. Their fossils are so few, yet their genetic footprint is vast, suggesting a widespread, adaptable people. This contrast underscores the power of modern science. DNA unlocks secrets bones alone can't tell. Let's explore how these invisible traces reveal their lives and legacy. The Denisovans' true impact lies not in their bones, but in their DNA, a legacy woven into our own genomes. Genetic studies show they interbred with both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, creating a web of gene swapping that shaped modern humans. In Southeast Asia and Melanesia, particularly among Papua New Guineans, Denisovan DNA makes up to 4% of genomes, far higher than the 1.8 to 2.6% Neanderthal DNA in Europeans and Asians. A 2019 study revealed even more. Denisovans weren't a single group, but had at least three distinct lineages, suggesting diversity that might rival Neanderthals or early sapiens. Some interbreeding was recent, possibly 15,000, 30,000 years ago, meaning Denisovans survived into the late Ice Age, fading just as modern civilizations dawned. This genetic exchange wasn't just a footnote, it was transformative. Take modern Tibetans, they carry Denisovan genes that regulate hemoglobin, letting them thrive at high altitudes where oxygen is scarce. Without these mutations, life on the Tibetan plateau would be grueling. Similarly, Inuit populations in the Arctic have Denisovan-like genes for brown fat, which stores heat in freezing climates. Other variants, tied to immune systems and skin pigmentation, likely helped our ancestors adapt to new diseases or sunlight levels as they migrated across Asia. This wasn't random mixing, but evolution in action. Denisovans, adapted to harsh environments, passed on survival tools through hybrid children, giving Homo sapiens an edge in colonizing diverse lands. Our species didn't conquer alone. We absorbed strengths from our cousins, blending their resilience with our innovations. Denisovan genes suggest they were masters of adaptation, perhaps roaming high plateaus or frigid steppes with ease. Their interbreeding with Neanderthals, like the hybrid child in Denisova Cave, paints a picture of fluid boundaries, groups meeting, mating, and merging across the mammoth steppe. This wasn't a clash of species, but a collaboration, one that echoes in our DNA today. What was life like for Denisovans? With so few fossils, their daily existence is a puzzle, but the Mammoth Steppe offers clues. Denisova Cave, their primary home in the record, was a sanctuary amid the Ice Age's chaos. Picture a band of Denisovans huddled around a hearth, the fire's glow casting shadows on limestone walls. They might have chipped flint into blades, their hands calloused from crafting spears to hunt reindeer or scavenge mammoth kills. Tools found in the cave, scrapers, points, even bone needles, suggest skilled craftsmanship, but we can't say if they were Denisovan, Neanderthal, or Sapiens creations. The cave was a crossroads, hosting all three groups over millennia, their artifacts mingling in the sediment. 
Their diet likely mirrored Neanderthals, meat from ibex or bison, supplemented by berries, roots, or mushrooms foraged in warmer months. Coastal Denisovans, if they existed, might have speared fish or gathered shellfish, as Neanderthals did in Gibraltar. My speculation, Denisovans in high-altitude Tibet likely relied on yak or wild goats, their bodies honed for thin air. Their social structure, like Neanderthal bands, was probably tight-knit, with labor shared among men, women, and even children. Elders might have taught tool-making, while hunters tracked herds across the steppe, signaling with shouts or bone flutes. Artifacts found in similar contexts suggest music or communication. Culturally, Denisovans remain elusive. Did they bury their dead with flowers, as some Neanderthals did? Did they carve cave walls or wear feather ornaments? We don't know, but their interbreeding suggests social encounters, perhaps trading tools or sharing fires with sapiens or Neanderthals. These interactions imply a proto-culture of exchange, not just genes but ideas, tools, or stories. Denisovans might have sung of mammoth hunts or painted ochre symbols, their voices lost to time. Their high-altitude adaptations hinted at people who climbed mountains, both literally and figuratively, pushing human limits in ways we're only beginning to understand. To bring this ancient world to life, let's connect it to tangible stories. First, consider the Shanidar Cave Neanderthals, 1,500 miles from Denisova. One individual, dated to 70,000 years ago, had a crushed skull, missing arm, and limp, yet lived to old age, cared for by his group. Picture his kin sharing bison meat, guiding his steps across icy slopes, a mirror to how Denisovans might have nurtured their own. This care wasn't charity, it was survival, ensuring group cohesion in a world where every member counted. Now look at Otzi the Iceman, a 5,300-year-old Homo sapiens from the Alps. Found in 1991, Otzi had arrow wounds and arthritis, yet carried medicinal herbs and a copper axe. Signs his group supported him despite frailty. Imagine Denisovans doing the same, applying plant salves to cuts or carrying an injured kin to safety. Modern parallels exist too. The Hadza of Tanzania, hunter-gatherers who share food with elders, even those too weak to hunt. A blind Hadza woman might weave baskets, her family ensuring she eats, echoing Ice Age bonds. In World War II, soldiers carried wounded comrades through battlefields, just as Denisovans likely bore their injured across the steppe. Even animals reflect this. Dolphins lift sick pod members to the surface to breathe, suggesting care is primal. Today in rural Mongolia, nomadic herders share yak milk with the elderly their tents a modern echo of cave hearths. These stories show compassion wasn't unique to Denisovans, but a thread weaving through time, from ancient steps to modern villages. What does the Denisovan story teach us? It's a tale of connection, not conquest. In the Ice Age, our ancestors didn't dominate alone. They thrive by blending with others, sharing genes, tools, and perhaps dreams. Denisovans, with their sparse bones and vast genetic reach, remind us that humanity is a mosaic, built from the strengths of many. In our world of division, we forget this ancient truth. The Denisovans' legacy, high-altitude lungs, cold-resistant fat, lives in us, proof that cooperation, not competition, shaped our survival. Embrace our shared humanity, whether it's helping a stranger, supporting a struggling friend, or valuing diverse perspectives. Every act of connection honors our prehistoric roots. In caves and on steps, Denisovans, Neanderthals, and Sapiens built a world together. Let's carry that forward, weaving bonds that endure like DNA across millennia. <laughs>